No, I listen to it all the time. I tell all my friends to smack it raw. Podcast contains mature content. The views and opinions expressed by the coast are announced for those of the host. Listener discretion is advised. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Smack and Raw Podcast, episode two thirty six. I am your host, the patron saint of podcasting, the warden Matt Ritter, and taking the lead in the race for Pornhub Poppy twenty twenty three. My co-host, Daddy Delgado, the Sultan of Spitter Swallow. SES Vince. Vince, how you doing? That is home, Matt, and that is in the lead. This is what I like to see. This is this is what I strive for. I should have had a 2-0 lead, but you decided to invite Katie on last week and fuck with me, trying to fuck on me, and not let me get this 2-0 lead on Katie. I mean, Katie asked. I'm not going to tell Katie no. She asked. Like, did, did, did you or did you not say that when I'm available and I'm on the show, Katie won't be on and vice versa. I did not say that. We I will look that shit up because I you swear when we started up because oh. the very first episode we did where we started it, both you and Katie were on the show. Yeah, and you said that like, going forward, like I will not have one on when I have the other on. So listen, hold on. That's not important. What is important though is <laughs> from the damn near almost now defunct get your podcast. Get your Making his return, and hopefully this time staying on Pornhub, the one, the only, Daryl. He prepared with a shirt. And because one Filipino isn't enough for me and WWE's been keeping them away from me, uh, do we do we have do we have a friend? Are, are you here by yourself? Where? Oh, 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 he's coming. He is coming. Who's going to come first, your friend or your is Veer going to come first or is uh, your guest going to come first? That's that's the bigger question. Who's going to race? Like, did he literally wait to take a shit until we started recording? <laughs> <laughs> you waited for that right time. What the f- <laughs> I don't even know. Hello, ladies. He came in with the Val Venus music and the towel. You know him. <laughs> You love him. He is your alopecia daddy. It is Justin. Justin, what's going on? Yo, 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 here together again. That's what friends are for, man. I'm here to it help is. you. You help me. I, and I appreciate it. We had a, a couple guests lined up that uh, did not work out, unfortunately. And when I let you guys know, you're like, hey, fuck it. We're only shooting OnlyFans content in our hotel. We got nothing else going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's right it's called two top sticks and one pot wait what to what <laughs> if anyone likes to donate money for this, <laughs> yeah, definitely hold take money. i'm dead I'm <laughs> all right let's get into news and rumors uh obviously first and foremost the biggest news that broke this week unfortunately scott hall has passed away um i know Everyone that talks about it is going to talk about, you know, the great moments from Scott Hall, him showing up in WCW and cutting that promo, basically starting the NWO because say what you want about Hulk Hogan, Scott Hall is the beginning of the NWO. That that promo on WCW Nitro was it. You talk about the ladder match. You can talk about his matches with uh, one, two, three kid. You can talk about the curtain call. A lot of great moments that Scott Hall's brought us. But for me personally, um, it's the finisher. It's the razor's edge. My two favorite finishers growing up were the tombstone pile driver and the razor's edge. And two of the characters that I created that I still create in WWE games to this day, um, were based off of, you know, the tombstone and the razor's edge. And that Scott was really my inspiration for one of those characters. So, um, I'm saddened to hear that Scott passed away. It sucks. Um, how about you guys? 
Um, well, me personally, I wasn't really around to like, I wasn't at least watching when his run in the both WCW and WWE was uh, happening. I just kind of like knew of him because of NWO. He was always a big name. Obviously, like first wrestle, first ladder match in WWE history, quote unquote, first ever uh, at WrestleMania with Shawn Michaels. Like you always get like those like those moments. So I always, I always knew of him. Like outside of the ring, like he was just, he just always seemed like a very cool dude. Dude, and his uh, Hall of Fame speech, like, made me like the guy even more and appreciate him because he nailed it with that speech. Yeah, I'm saddened uh, to hear that he passed away. My condolences to his family and all his friends. He's going to be missing. Never want to see the legend go, man. Like, but uh, like you said, man, bad, uh, bad times never don't last, but uh, bad guys do. So um, hopefully we just keep him in our thoughts and uh, I mean, he'll, he'll live forever. He'll live forever. He will. <clears throat> well, kind of like what everyone's been saying about Scott Hall, the person, like everything I agree with. I mean, it's hard to like, you know, let go of something that somebody like that, like, like, like so special, but his psychology was on point. Like he had a mind for everything, you know, like the sting thing, like to tell him to do black and white, like that was his idea. Like there's been stories where like, he's the one that told Shawn Michaels to use the super kick or switch him music as his finisher. Mm-hmm. You know, like the whole psychology for a guy like his size to be like that good. And man, the ring gear, you know what I'm saying? With the razors and the colors, you know, the toothpick, the chains. Like yeah. drip in WCW. The, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then like the, yeah, the, the drip. And then like, yeah, it's just a shame too, since like he was like on the right path too. Like he was getting sober, he was cleaning up. He was trying to like repatch like a lot of like stuff in his in his life. So like it, it's hard. It's hard. But um yeah, he will he'll be forever like, you know, in our thoughts though. Yeah. For a guy who was doing the razor's edge to my brother Jay when he was smaller than me. You you did the razor. Yeah, yeah that, that's the fucking best finisher, man. For real. <laughs> On the bed, dude. Was like, but like, yeah, um, yeah, really hurts because he really was one of my favorites as well um also so great of a actor and promo guy that i had no idea until today that there is no hispanic in him yeah he's a straight up white guy the entire fucking time that's a fake ass tan i thought he was at least half or a quarter and no, no i did not know that he literally did not have yeah no like we have to Cuban. check the ancestry.com like, no, no on Cuban. No Cuban. But yeah, freaking name, man. Damn. See, that's how good he was. That's how good he was. RIP to him, man. For real. And I mean, like you guys said, so he he told Sting, hey, you should go watch this movie, The Crow. And that's kind of where The Crow Sting, which is my favorite version of Sting, came from. But also, the entire character of Razor Ramon is based off of Tony Montana from Scarface, which is where yeah. you, why you thought he was part Hispanic. Like, and he took some of the best of pop culture and brought it into wrestling in a way that really worked and revolutionized wrestling and made it fun and cool. Um, speaking to, you know, the razor's edge, I gave Travis a razor's edge off Why? of the trampoline. Stop. I did. I gave Travis Why? a razor's Why? edge off of the, off of the trampoline. We said, you know, those like, uh, like lounge chairs, like the, uh, yeah. the ones by the pool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We put two of those next to each other to make a table <laughs> and I dropped them right in between them onto the ground <laughs> off the, oh, off the trampoline Just- as we were kids. Totally ignored the disclaimer that WWE put in there. I got it. Okay, I see you. What, what, one of the what very disclaimer? There was a disclaimer? <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about? I also power bombed him. I believe it was a razor's edge as well onto uh, onto the trampoline, but it was like a straight sheet of ice, and all the ice broke oh, when he hit it. it so, well, well, see, Travis is a pretty uh, he's a he's a he's a healthy dude. He's a very healthy dude. Both <laughs> he wasn't are. back then. He was skinny Ooh, back Asian then. Mom? Really? He was oh, both okay, okay. Back so then. Happy. So that was my question. It was like, how did you manage no. that? Either you have he didn't amazing... have that padding. Oh, he didn't have all that padding, and all that cushioning that he does now. <laughs> but even then, I mean, I, I've always been a strong guy. I could have picked him up. I could probably pick him up for a razor's edge now. Could you pick Travis, up for a hammer? Come back to Chicago. Oh, hell yeah, I'm worthy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know how difficult it is to get someone in the razor's edge? It's not easy, you know? And then to like hold him, hold the person there, and yeah. then slam and then them slam. over. Yeah, and to make sure that the guy's tucking his chin and everything. 
Mm-hmm. Not an easy, yeah. it's not an easy move. It's not. Uh, so rest in peace to Razor Ramon, Scott Hall, the bad guy from the Get Your Podcast and the Smack and Raw Podcast. Um, a bit of lighter news. Uh, some nice things that happened. Uh, Joey Janela left AEW, so I never have to see Joey Nutella again. Uh, because I don't watch Joey shit. Nutella. Um, no, I, I, Joey's not for me. I know people liked him, and I hope you know he has success on the indies and all that stuff where he can do the things he wants to do. Uh, apparently he said a lot of the same things and echoed a lot of the same sentiments that uh big swole did yet none of you racist motherfuckers who attack big swole are saying jack shit to joey even though he said the same shit so shame on you mm-hmm. shame rock c signed with nxt yes that's yep. a big signing I, i'm very yep. happy about that because yep. i actually have a roxy story so this was before uh, the Crimson Chin was outed as being racist. Uh, I was a, I was a supporter of hers. I liked her, so I went to a, a Women's of Rice wrestling show here in Chicago, actually in Berwyn, at the Berwyn Eagles Club, and I was trying to like meet up with Tessa afterwards to get like a picture and shit. And um, I was wearing like a custom like Tessa Blanchard like snapback that I had made. Oh, and, what? yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a di- it had like a diamond on it and it's uh it had a it- chin <laughs> and the chin now and then Roxy goes up to me and I was like is that it like are you a Tessa Blanchard guy like is that a Tessa Blanchard like hey I'm like yeah I made it myself and all this other stuff and we talked about it I had no idea she was a pro wrestler I thought she was a fan that just went up to me because she oh, was okay. just like this this small little tiny person of a of, right. uh, uh, like a person it's just and I, I had no idea who the fuck that was. And we we were talking about it, and then uh, she saw me with the with the with the shirt and the hat, and um, but like Tessa had left, so she actually went ahead and took a picture with me and sent it to Tessa and be like, "Hey, look who's here!" Like, like, like you have like one of your fans are here, and then she replied, "It's like that's fucking awesome," because it was like a custom shirt or like, ah. and uh, so I had gotten the text back. But I had no idea it was Roxy until like halfway through the conversation. Like I knew she was just a pro wrestler. Then later on, I had did a I had went to another show that she was performing in, found out it was Roxy, and I had a whole ass conversation with her afterwards. I'm like, dude, I had no idea you were a pro wrestler. And I had I think I had to tweet at her. I'm like, I, I feel like if if I look it up, I can find those tweets of that conversation, me not knowing that I had a full blown conversation with Roxy and not knowing it was her. Okay. Now, Vince, you do know. I mean, hold on. So, Tessa texts back Roxy. Yeah, because uh, oh, I thought she. Te- I thought Roxy texts you. Okay, my bad. No, 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 no. Because no. uh, Tessa and Daga were training. Uh, were right, one of the right, people right. that were helping to train Roxy. Gotcha. Again, this was like a year or two before she was out. Of as, now, as, well, as my, th- that's what I was gonna get. Is like, well, I mean. Yeah, she's a racist, but I mean, she's only a racist to like certain people. She spends time. You might still have a chance. If you can put the racism aside, Vince, you might still have a chance with the Crimson Chin. Do you still have the snapback in the shirt? Uh, it's somewhere there. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's around there somewhere. If you're interested, I'm just saying you might be able to paint that chin white. Oh, <laughs> Rick said he'd do it just out of principle. Like he... <laughs> See, you know what? That's Reek. I don't. I don't know if I can make that same type of move. Uh, it's a lot to commit. It's a lot to commit. Yeah, it's, it's a, a, You don't want to waste all your Cheeto sugar in just one person. And since I didn't do it, but we're talking about Reek, and we talked about Scott Hall, obviously the NWO. Make sure you guys go support the Black Lives Matter movement, unlike the Crimson Chin, and uh, go get one of those awesome Black Lives Matter T-shirts that Vince is wearing in the NWO style. Um, the money goes to a good cause. It goes to a fund that TC from Young Kings Wrestling has put aside, and all the money is donated to GoFundMe's and other charitable causes to support family members and those who have lost someone to racial injustice and police brutality, uh, for you know, funeral costs and court fees and all of these things to help support these people. So it's not associated with the actual organization in any way shape or form so if that's a deterrent for you you don't need to worry about that it is just about supporting the idea that black lives do matter and trying to get something positive done with everything negative that's been going on um right exactly well i don't want to go in a clean charmel after that so 
Roderick Strong <laughs> got shipped out to NXT UK. That was oh, the thing that happened. What? Yep. Yeah. I had no idea. Damn. Yeah, they said, yeah, you know what? We got nothing for you. We're going to focus on the Creed. So why don't you go hang out in Europe where we don't pay attention? You can run um, rush out of there. Was that a, for like a limited time? Was he sent there permanently for some tapings? Or was he is he just a permanent UK guy now? I have no fucking clue. I just saw the WWE exclusive where he's like, hey, I'm going to the UK and I'm going to fuck up some people. <laughs> well, you know oh, what? Man. The last person that, that happened to, Chris Hero. Yeah, he didn't come back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, Queen Charmel getting inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame alongside The Undertaker and Vader. Go ahead. Give me your thoughts on it. I want to hear them. I love it. Love it. Sure. Like, <laughs> I, I like, like this, <laughs> and, and this, this is not me coming in any kind of way. Like, honestly, at this point in the Hall of Fame, like, whoever you want to recognize, recognize, you know, like, Yes, she doesn't have any in-ring like accolades, but you know she was the the main manager of like King Booker. She really helped solidify that. Uh, if you can look past uh, her like and her angle with Kurt Angle, you know, like she had a really uh, positive career uh, in WWE, even though it was a short stint. I mean, if someone like Vicky Guerrero can get inducted in, or like a manager can get inducted in at all times, like why can't Charmel get inducted? So like, I don't see an issue with it. Cool. I'm all for it. more women in the Hall of Fame. Hopefully, she's not the only woman inductee. Uh, I'd like to see consistently more than one woman being inducted per year. You know, induct two girls at the same time. You know, two women at the same time. You know, induct a tag team. You know, I think the only times two women have been inducted in the same class have been the Bell Twins. So yeah, and they got mm-hmm. inducted together, so that didn't really that didn't yeah, really count. Like yeah, default, but yeah, exactly. Uh, I agree. There's been a lot of discourse on twitter about oh this person deserved it that person deserved it this and that and i just i want to explain to you guys so queen charmel started out as a nitro girl in late wcw she went on to become paisley who managed the artist uh which was a prince ripoff that wcw did Uh and then after he got fired went on to manage kiwi which was like uh, wcw's rico um then obviously came to wwe with booker t was a major part of the whole King Booker thing getting over. And that was when he had that amazing title run as yeah. King Booker. She was a huge part of that, getting that over. Stop saying people don't deserve it or somebody deserves it more. She is more than deserving of being inducted into the Hall of Fame, in my personal opinion. And I'm happy to see her go. Just because there are other people you also like to see inducted, let's not take away from her or bash her because she got in before someone you'd rather see not you specifically Vince but like no 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 no, I I wanted to add to that and it's like it it seems to be more of an issue with like women inductees you Mm -hmm. saw it when Kelly Kelly was gonna get inducted you saw it when the Bellas were gonna get inducted I'm like how are you gonna induct them before x y and z and so and so like that's what I've noticed is that like the up uh, outrage and uproar is when a woman athlete performer or character gets inducted into the hall of fame that the iwc feels hasn't put in their dues to get inducted but like i said this i don't remember if i did this on this podcast or when i was on smack draw but i wholeheartedly said that i do not agree with rikishi being in the hall of fame because i didn't think he did enough except shake his ass like his ass can get into his it's it but it's a whole other thing that we're gonna sit here and unpack but me i sat there on my I don't think Rikishi did enough in his career. He hadn't won enough things. Like, if you guys want to sit here and critique other people, like, let's critique. Because I think it was the same year the Bellas went in. Or I think someone else went in. And they were getting uh, all these critiques for that woman inductee, but not for Rikishi. And I'm like, well, this woman athlete has accomplished more in ring than Rikishi ever did. The only thing of note that I remember of Rikishi is he had a fat ass, he got thrown off the Hell in a Cell by The Undertaker, and he did it for The Rock. Those are the three things I remember about Rikishi. And he was an Intercontinental Champion. I don't remember that. But it it still happened. Sure. Okay. But so so did Santino So did Santino Morella. So did Santino Morella. He he created the Usos, one of the greatest tag teams of all time. Hold on, is it is from George his Animal Steel in the Hall of Fame? Say what? George Animal Steel is he in the Hall of Fame? Yeah. Right now. Okay, so then Rikishi could be in the Hall of Fame too. 
See, and here, and here's here's again <laughs> because George Adam Steele was just a hairy man that bit shit. I had a green Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on. touch they actually touch uh uh Miss Elizabeth <clears throat> and he's in the hall are you are you throwing shade at hairy men because <laughs> <laughs> yes I'm jealous I'm okay. jealous I think the most shocking thing about this is Vince being a Latino man not an ass guy what the fuck is this man look at this <laughs> <laughs> <That's a fucking laughs> Now I want to see your girl. She got flat ass. Oh God! Oh, uh, coming, coming, oh, okay, coming okay. into the back door. How flat is this? Okay. Like, okay. <laughs> no, it's like again, like going back to it. Like I don't give a fuck if Rikisha's in the Hall of Fame or not. I'm not gonna lose any sleep. I was just trying to make the case that like I everyone's grilling this woman, at, at, like inductee, when they're not giving the same energy to Rikishu, who has accomplished less than that inductee. I can't remember who exactly it was. I'll look it up while we're doing the show. But well, I, uh, I know what you mean. Yeah, but yeah. No, I love ass. I, I like tits, man. I, I don't discriminate, man. Like, <laughs> which is a great transition. Which yes. is a great transition because next piece of news. Uh, I have it under good authority that tomorrow, or now, I guess in four minutes today, Tony Storm will be opening her OnlyFans. <laughs> Since we're talking about ass. And uh, here's the thing. I am in full support of female wrestlers opening their OnlyFans. This is not 1990s WWF where Vince is like, listen, you're going to go get out there in your bra and panties. I'm going to walk you like a dog or you're going to go fuck Edge on live TV or you're fucking fired. This is what I need. I'll find somebody else. Like, that's not this. This is these women deciding that this is something that they want to do, a service that they want to provide and are seeking um, compensation for it, but fully under their own you know you know scarlet bordeaux brandy lauren now uh tony storm there are some independent women out there chelsea green like they're they're choosing the content that they want to share they're this is completely of them so if this is what they want to do all for it and if you're one of those guys it's like oh well how could you pay like pay attention to your own fucking pockets don't worry about what everyone else is spending their money on and how they do it just because you don't think it's like shut the fuck up and let people do what the fuck they're gonna do so i fully support tony in this endeavor um and i'm looking forward to seeing where this leads and what we get out of it well yeah that's like that's the thing like not all only fans accounts are all sexual like some of them are just like modeling pictures that you know mm-hmm. that they're doing it themselves that like because you know how much it costs to get a professional to take a photo it costs a lot of money so if they're doing it themselves they get 100 percent of that back you know yep. so so yeah i i don't mind i i actually thought of starting my account myself <laughs> i mean everyone i thought you guys were i thought that's why we were in the hotel room <laughs> yeah yeah Ebony and Ivory. Well, just to let you know, I mean, here's a sneak peek. Okay. <laughs> what happened to two chopsticks in a pot? Wasn't that what you said? Oh, that's going to film later if you guys want. Okay. If you guys want to help okay. with the sound effects. Okay. Two um, a- and last but not <laughs> least, okay. and I've been waiting to talk about this all week, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> all right, here we go. So, former NXT referee Drake Younger, as he was known in NXT, um, is running for Florida State representative. And apparently a list of people who have contributed to his campaign was leaked. One of which was Matt Riddle. Now also Elias and Karrion Cross and Biff Busick, who actually came out and said, Hey, I didn't know that that's what I was giving him money for. I don't support any of his ideas, yeah. blah, 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 which. Okay. But I'll nobody cap. else. I say, I, I say that's cat. Nobody yeah. else. As far as I know has come out and retracted, you know, Hey, I didn't mean to give this guy money. Well, he literally said that. Drake just hit him up and was like, Hey, uh, can I get some money for, you know, whatever? And he, he sent his, the guy some money, not knowing, you know, what it was for, um, or that it was going towards this, but here's why this is an issue. And this is only gonna be an issue for like 50% of the audience. Now I'm assuming hundred percent of the audience, because we support black lives matter and, you know, stop the Asian hate and all the things that, you know, racist fucking right-wing Republican MAGA supporters don't. So I don't know why you'd be listening to us, but if you are, that's cool. Like, <laughs> hey, I, I appreciate the views. Thanks. Uh, he, he he says he's a MAGA Republican. Uh, he is anti-abortion. He is uh, known to be linked to both QAnon and Proud Boys. Like, all of these just terrible, awful things. And this is where Matt Riddle is shoveling his money to get someone in the state of Florida elected 
to fuck Florida up even more because as I have been telling you guys for the longest time, and I never said anything about the Candy Cartwright shit. Like I left that out of it. Regardless of how I feel about it, nothing was proven. Matt Riddle's a huge piece of shit for supporting this guy, for existing. And I've been waiting all week to slam dunk on him for this. So there you go. He supports someone who is a MAGA Republican who has ties to QAnon and the Proud Boys, which racist and anti-abortion Trump supporter, super Christian referred to Jackson Riker as an American Patriot and was very upset. Cause he said that the people that were in the Capitol riots, uh, the Patriots that were in the Capitol riots are being categorized by the American government, the same as the nine 11 terrorists. And he didn't think it was oh. right. And that's who Matt Riddle is supporting to be a part of the Florida state government. I got no comment on this. I don't, I'm, I'm, this is in the horse. I, this is in what, what's, what's the phrasing? Like, this is not like I'm willing, something I'm not willing to die. On. This is not the hell. It's not a hell I'm willing to die on. That's the phrase. That's the phrase I was looking for. I don't care enough about Matt Riddle uh, one way or another. So fuck Matt Riddle. Hashtag Ritter over Riddle. What the fuck was that? I know who farted, man. What the fuck? No, I think somebody blew their nose. Yeah, that's my girl blowing her nose. Um, okay, okay. Well, I got to say about to Matt Riddle is, bro. <laughs> Come on. I'm smart, coach. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys caught that on the mic. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> We're leaving that in. That's That might be the title of the episode. I snort coke. <laughs> I already told you what the title of the episode was going to be. Oh my god! Was she there for your anti-ass rant? Was she there for that? No. Oh, okay, okay. You got That's how I knew it wasn't her farting because yeah, yeah, yeah. from, from Daryl's description, it wouldn't make that much noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it'd be like blow it like like a sheet <laughs> of paper like trying to blow a candle out. Yeah. Yeah. We're 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 side track. We're we're like this. <laughs> All right, going off topic here. We're we're also not covering Rampage because Rampage was going on as we were getting ready and everything, and none of us watched it. So we're we're skipping yeah, Rampage this week. Rampage. That's uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been that long. <laughs> Daryl, All right. Daryl doesn't know what Rampage was. Sorry. So Daryl hasn't oh, watched. Daryl has not watched wrestling since the Royal Rumble, and probably <laughs> even longer before that. But uh, he is here to let me fill him in in my own special way on the goings and. What's yeah, happening story time over here? Story time with Matt. So let's get into it. Monday Night Raw. Uh, KO kicks off the show, running his mouth about the toughest SOB in pro wrestling, the toughest SOB anyone has ever seen. Motherfucking Stone Cold Steve Austin. Uh, during yeah. this rant, he stuns a cameraman. Uh, Finn loses to Damian Priest. Theory sitting ringside, tries to get involved, ends up getting wrecked by Finn Balor which leads to them getting distracted. Damian Priest hitting his finish and getting the win. And then after the match, Theory comes in, grabs a selfie. Uh, Seth interview, he's just catatonic. He's not talking, just furious because he has no spot on WrestleMania and he doesn't know what he's going to do. Uh, Omos erects Aziz Ansari and Apollo. Um, KO tries to cheer up Seth and he's like, hey, you know, it's going to be okay. Like, you'll figure something out. And he's like, you know what? I got a great idea. I got a great idea. He looked like a kid who got his first boner. He was so happy. Um, <laughs> Liv Morgan de- defeats... De- la- 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 Liv Morgan defeats Zelina Vega. Zelina says Mella better get focused or else before the match because she feels that Mella is costing them these matches. Uh, then Rhea well, shows is. up, scares the shit out of Carmella so bad at ringside that she hops into Corey's lap and just starts dry fucking him. Um, Rollins, who is now in a very good mood, calls KO out, and he's like, all right, here's the plan. So you're going to do a talk show, right? And you're going to have Stone Cold Steve Austin on. What if I do a talk show and have Stone Cold Steve Austin on? And KO's like, dude, what? What? Like, what the fuck? He's like, no, seriously, like, I'll do the talk show. I need this more than you do. So I'll just have Stone Cold on. And KO's like, no, dude, fuck off. Back off my shit. And so it's like, well, what if we have a match for it? And the winner gets to do the talk show with Stone Cold Steve Austin. And then out comes Sonya Deville, who's like, you know what? That actually sounds like a great idea. Like, I don't care that KO has been 
fighting his ass off to try and figure out his spot on WrestleMania and created this whole thing. Fuck Kevin Owens. Let's have a match for it. So that's going to be our main event. Uh, Dominic and Ray defeat the Hurt Business. Miz and his douche are ringside. Uh, Daryl, his douche would be Logan Paul, uh, who will be his tag oh, team partner at WrestleMania. Logan Paul's a part of this shit now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, Okay. Miz saves his douche from getting a double 69 at the end of the match. I'm sorry, 619 at the end of the match. Double <laughs> 619 at the end of the match. Um, Edge comes out with his new theme, says he's better than everyone. We don't matter to him. We held him back all of this time. And if AJ makes it to Mania, he will be judged by Edge. Dun dun. Bianca defeats Dewdrop. Uh, there's a pre match interview where. Bianca's like, Becky touched my hair, so she got what she deserved. I cracked her windpipe, and now the show's been so peaceful because the dumb bitch can't talk. So after the match, Becky shows up, drops Bianca, and then gets some revenge with the chair and hits her in the throat as well. I'm making things even. Uh, um, <clears throat> we got a celebration for your tag team champions, RK Blows. Uh, it's fucking nauseating. Thank God for the Street Profits coming out and ending this shit. Street Profits are like, hey, listen, you guys don't have opponents. We need a match mania. How about we do this? And Randy's like, you know what? I don't really feel like fighting you guys. And they're like, well, we weren't really asking for an opportunity. We're just letting you know it's going to fucking happen. And then Randy says, well, it's not going to happen. Riddle's like, no, 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 bro. It's cool. You know, I don't want to seem like a racist because of who I support politically. So I'll give you guys a match. And then uh, Tez is like, well, you know, next time you guys throw a party, make sure it's not so shitty. And Riddle got all mad. He's like, Randy tried really hard to make this really good for me and blah, 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 even though he doesn't know anything I like or doesn't really give a fuck about me. It was a whole thing. So we got Montez versus Riddle, and it goes to a no contest because out comes Alpha Academy, who wrecks everyone. Um, then we got our beautiful Scott Hall tribute. WWE does a great job with these tribute packages. It was amazing. And then in our main event, Kevin Owens defeats Seth Rollins, so KO will still get to do the KO show with Stone Cold Steve Austin, Good. and Seth ain't got shit to do, though rumor has it that Homelander has signed with WWE and is probably going to be Seth's opponent at WrestleMania. And if you don't know who Homelander is, it's neck tattoo himself, Cody <laughs> Rhodes, who I give zero fucks about being in WWE. <laughs> or having wait, 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 wait. Uh, are, are we talking about the? Uh, are we talking about Cody Luther King here? You know, like the one, uh, I'm not, the I'm one not and call, only. I'm not calling him. The, that. The, according to Big Swole, that's Cody Luther King, the the <laughs> the the supporter of all black women athletes in the AEW, and during his time there, you know, he was the one to go to. You know, like if that's what he's bringing to the WWE, sure, 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 sure. Why not? Okay, I mean, yeah, we know yeah. he likes black women. <laughs> More than Tony Khan, more than oh, Khan. but not, but not as much as Daryl. Not oh, as much yeah. as Daryl. <laughs> That's why I act the way I do. <laughs> Out of pocket, get black women. It's like a fucking. Uh, it's the only. Okay, it's also double sixty nine. Should be the title of the show now. By the way, now double double. 69. Yeah. Uh, just dude, there's so much more to come. Just wait. We're we're just getting started. That's what she said. Also, That's what she said. also is is that a white thing? Just ran like blindly giving money out like like riddle did like because if i gave money out i am like so fucking asian cheap that i will like put it in my notes app and make sure i would harass this person for like the next week until i get my money well, riddle <laughs> didn't riddle blindly didn't give it out blindly uh only lorkin did no, he's shit. also white so it's probably still a white thing but yeah. it, it, i'm I going to like believe it. that riddle knew exactly what he was doing yeah of course I feel like it might. I feel like it might be a white thing because I would never give out money. Because like the first thing when someone asks me, "Hey, can I borrow money?" I'm like, "What do you need it for?" Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How much? So wait, and when are, are you going to give it back? You guys are telling me that if I were to run for Illinois state representative and I needed donations for my campaign, you guys aren't hooking me up. Oh, well, no. because you literally just described what you do, and I'll yeah. be like, "Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to be like, you're not going to be like, hey, I need some money." I'm like, "Yeah, sure, okay, man. I trust you some for some reason. Yeah, sure." You know what I do for you, Matt? I'm a very trusting person. Matt, you know what I do for oh. your campaign? Is I'd hire a taquero to be at your rallies to make sure you get the Mexican vote. You get the I Latino population oh, yeah. by having taqueros. <laughs> like free tacos. 
a, a vote for Matt is a vote for tacos. We'll get the tamale guy. Yes. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Shout out TC. Shout out TC. <laughs> Young Kings Wrestling, baby. <laughs> y'all can cap for Cody all you want. I ain't doing it. Actually, I got a question for y'all. What What is the most that Stone Cold has to do in a match to make you guys happy? Like, or like if it's if it's like a five second squash where he just like. Away. I want him to slap meats with Kevin Owens. <laughs> That's what. I, if he slaps meat with Kevin Owens, then I'm good. I know Canadian bacon's pretty big. That's, <laughs> I mean, I know everything's bigger in Texas, but that's Canadian bacon, like with with wise, is that's large. Well, we were supposed to have Mr. Warren Hayes on. Maybe he can clarify whether Canadian bacon's thicker than American bacon. <laughs> Mr. Warren Hayes, when you listen to this, I'm going to need that answer. Along with the answer, I'm going to need Wednesday when my episode with Apron Bump drops for the other question. Is Canadian bacon thicker than American bacon? Um, Picks or it didn't happen, by the way. No. <laughs> Picks or it didn't happen. We'll, we'll, start, we'll, we'll start with swallows, and I'll swallow this whole thing. Like I, I, I'm swallowing everything KO and Seth. I, I mean, a lot of people thought it was a waste of time, but it's, it's storytelling. It's building. It's the, you know, is KO after all of this gonna lose it because it's motherfucking Seth Rollins. And if Seth doesn't win this match, then what is he going to do? Like we all know, because we know too much about the business. But if you look at this from someone from the outside, who isn't on Twitter, who doesn't have all of this information and you watch it that way, you know, you take yourself out of it. It's, it's a very intriguing story that they're telling between these two best friends. who are both trying to find their spot in WrestleMania. As far as KO and stone cold go, it's just going to be a KO show. I don't think we're going to get a match though. I'd love to get a match, but at the most, all I need is what we got from John Cena and Undertaker. Yep. Yep. Let know. Austin come in, hit a Luthes press, yep. throw some punches, stomp a mud hole, hit a stunner, get the fuck out. But it has to be crisp. Like, they have to be to a, uh, crisp to a certain extent. I don't want it to, like, feel like it's just kind of like, listen, hit, we're, like, feeding Austin. Stone like, Cold is a perfectionist. If he ain't going to do it crisp, he ain't going to do it. Right. Exactly. Good. Good. And that's the one thing I respect about Austin. It's like, dude, like, you don't have to come back. You don't have to do anything. Just take your paycheck from the KO show, and that's it. But um, going what else back to swallowing? Going to Swallows, I'm going to – I really only have – Two or three things to swallow. I'm gonna since we were talking about KO and Seth, I'm gonna swallow the match itself because I thought the match was really good. I'm gonna go ahead and swallow uh the edge promo, even though mm. I'm still like indecisive on the new theme song. Like it's more or less like I like the promo's like uh, I don't need any of you, I'm better than you, I'm on the next level, I'm the best wrestler, AJ Styles isn't on my level type of st- like it's just your standard uh, heel promo, but Heel Edge is better than Babyface says. I will say this to the end of day, my end of days. And I'm all for it. You know, the match is going to slap. So I can't wait to see what they do with AJ. And just Montez. Montez coming out and just basically telling RK Blows that I... Now, we're not asking for a title match. We're demanding one. And I loved it because this is not the first time we've seen Street Profits with a little bit of Edge. And we've never, ever seen them as heels. And I want to see them as heels. I think they were supposed to debut as heels, but they were so over in full sale right. that they just organically became baby faces without actually turning. But I'd like to see like a Street Profits with some edge. I get it now, Vince. I get it. What? what? You're a jealous girlfriend. What do you mean? When no, Katie man. isn't here, you call them RK blows. But when I have Katie here, all of a sudden, you're singing Matt Riddle's praises and getting muted to get my attention. <laughs> I, I get it now. It makes sense. No, I'm no. I'm sorry. Listen. No, listen, listen, listen. Listen, Linda, listen. Uh, no, well, with my whole thing, it's like, I'm not trying to get muted. I'm not going to, like, I know how this shit goes. It's like, I can either sit here and try to get muted or I can just move the show along and agree to disagree and just confirm to Matt's hatred towards Riddle. It's not Riddle necessarily going to confirm to my hatred. It's just we all have to accept that I'm better than Matt Riddle in every which way, I, shape, and form. Oh, I mean, which I, yeah. which I, I've no, never okay. argued against, Matt. I've never argued against that, by the yeah. way. Um, what about you, Justin? Daryl? Anything Honestly, that we talked about that I mean, you guys thought sounded good or you're swallowing? I agree with everything you guys said, but the one thing I do have to swallow is the dry humping that Carmelo did on, on Corey Graves. I mean, Carmella is fine. Dude, there was so much dry <laughs> fucking in WWE this week. It's insane. It's great. 
Is that I, the isn't that the, the, the premise of their show? The like, dry, just dry humping? Just dry humping? And that, that was NXT 2.0 well. is all dry humping all the time. Well, I mean and everybody's trying to fucking NXT 2.0. Everybody's trying to fucking is it real NXT. world? Is it pretty much NXT's turned into real world 2000? Yeah, real yeah. yep. Literally. So it's fantastic. I love it. Story time sounded great. I'll swallow it. You gotta swallow a Scott Hall tribute because you know that's you know it's Scott mm-hmm. Hall. It's awesome. Also, if the Bianca versus Becky match is not called Battle to, for Throat Goat, I don't know what the hell to say about that. <laughs> right, right. I mean, when she, uh, piecing together Twitter stuff, she did like ruin her voice box, right? Bianca did. Yeah, she and cracked probably, her voice box. Yeah, there you go. Throat Goat Battle to be Throat Goat. Call me, creative, WWE creative. Call me, call me. How many drinks have you had, Daryl? WWE <laughs> WrestleMania Raw Women's Title: The Battle of the Throat Goats. Throat to the goat. Um, what about Spitner? Oh, uh, you know what? I'll swallow the Finn Balor, Damian Priest stuff too. That was a damn good match. Even though Austin Theory got involved, cost Finn. I enjoyed the show. That, that. No, that's that's actually one of my spits. It's like, why is why is Austin Theory interjected into that? I thought he was doing something with Pat McAfee. I thought he was yeah. done with Finn Balor. Like, if you want to be on TV as much as possible, you sit in Vince's office and you stroke his inner thigh. <laughs> we talked about these segments about the grooming. I too, Vince bro. has you been grooming him. You don't want to blow quad again. You don't want to. I mean, quad. look at this. We'll talk about it on SmackDown, but think about what happened on SmackDown. When has Vince ever demanded anyone apologize to anyone ever that hasn't been touching his penis in some way, shape, or form? We'll get to it on SmackDown. Oh, that but feels good right there. I'm just saying. That's why. Uh, I want to go ahead and spit almost just wrecking Commander Aziz and Apollo Crews, specifically. Aziz, I'm Apollo sorry. Crews. Yeah. Aziz, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just Apollo Crews getting destroyed by almost. It's like he was doing something. They finally gave him a character. They gave him something to sink his teeth into on SmackDown. He got drafted over to Raw, and then he's nothing. He's just back to what he used to be. I'm spitting Miz in his giant douche. Yeah. Same. Why is he in this damn show? Who, Miz? No, Logan Paul. Oh, Logan Paul? I don't know. I mean, because him and Miz are friends and it's WrestleMania and they want celebrity recognition. So they've got Johnny Knoxville and Logan Paul. And Pat McAfee, if you want to count him as a celebrity. I I consider him part of WWE at this point. I mean, he had banger matches and the matches in NXT. Mm -hmm. He's been a commentator. I, I, I consider him part of the. That's more like having a much better Michael Cole or like Jerry the King Lawler have a match at this point right, than it is. Right. Even though he is a punter from outside of the WWE and the podcast yeah. and all that, like I consider him part of the in-house team now. So Okay. Okay. Ratings been going up since uh Knoxville and Paul have been on there or no? Fuck if I know I don't pay attention to ratings. <laughs> no, we don't we we're not Melter. We're not Alvarez. We're not I'll just say the only thing that goes up around here is my dick during NXT two point <laughs> Uh, especially after this ep- this week's episode Wait, no. what a transition there well are we spitting anything else oh. you guys got any spits no, that's pretty much it oh, I'm, uh, spitting, I'm spitting the entire RK Blow celebration outside of the Montez stuff just because Matt Riddle's on my TV I spell Logan I, I, I'm spitting Logan Paul existing I'm spitting the fact that Logan Paul's mom didn't swallow him <laughs> I'm spitting the fact that Logan Paul's mom didn't spit him. Ah, <laughs> uh, there you go, there you go. That's that's the and one. his brother. <laughs> that is a woman that le- needed to learn how to use her head. <laughs> anyway, uh, overall, Monday Night Raw spit or swallow? I had a swallow. It sounded cool. Swallow. Yeah, it, it was- wasn't a bad show. Bad. I will say. I will say Twitter, like, I don't know, WWE, I don't, I don't know if it was on purpose, but, like, the everyone tuning in to see if Cody was going to show up made the episode a little bit more intriguing, I guess. Because I thought it was funny because so many people were like, I pay, I sat there for three hours and Cody was didn't show up. This is why I don't fuck with WWE. There were so many people complaining. So for that reason alone, for WWE trolling people about, like, Cody Rose maybe showing up and then, like, the little teases of Cody Rose at the end, 
about like how Seth's uh, WrestleMania plans are dashed. This is not this is not a dream. This is a nightmare. Like oh like God. those little like Easter eggs, like teasing Cody. I, yeah. Just just because of that, I'm swallowing the episode. You know what? I wasn't going to, but I'm gonna agree with you. And here's why: you people in the IWC worked yourself into a fucking shoot. Like you worked <laughs> yourselves. WWE never advertised Cody Rhodes. It didn't say anything. I was sitting on Twitter just waiting for you guys to have a fucking meltdown because I don't give two fucks about Homelander. I don't need to see him in WWE. There are no dream matches. The only thing I want to see happen to Cody Rhodes is I want to see him make one of his grand entrances and Triple H cave his fucking head in with a sledgehammer. That's all I need. That's all I fucking need. So I didn't give two fucks, but watching you guys all, a lot of you who hated Cody and AEW along with me, who now all of a sudden he's going back to WWE. You're like, oh my God, Cody Rhodes, he's coming. Like, I don't give a fuck. Watching you guys all melt down because he didn't show up, I absolutely fucking loved it. It was great. And for that, I agree. You guys get a swallow. <laughs> all right. NXT. We kick it off. I hear this Daryl. Yes. We, we kick yes. off NXT a form that you're gonna tell with, me. with Ms. TV featuring okay, well. your NXT champion, Dolph Ziggler. What the fuck just <laughs> happened? Yes. Uh, yeah. All right. So this is, they, this is a real thing. Basically, they say Braun Breaker got sent home earlier in the day. They show him showing up. There, it's a whole thing. He's outside. He's trying to get the building. He's looking for Dolph. Dolph's not there, so he gets in his car. He leaves. Uh, Ziggler keeps calling this his show, and that's the beautiful thing about this is it is Dolph Ziggler basically doing what Matt Cardona did on the Indies with GCW, where he's turning NXT into wwe he brought miz down to do a miz tv episode to piss off the nxt 2.0 fans except He's, fuck matt cardona let's go Dolph Ziggler. uh okay. la knight comes out and interrupts he's like listen if bron's not here and he can't challenge you for the title how about you fucking fight me bitch and Dolph, you know says well you know you're kind of a, you kind of suck and you're not really on my level but uh we end up getting the match anyway for the main event We got a Cora Jade interview. Apparently, she's a klepto. She stole all of Toxic Attraction's belts. I don't know how she got in and got all of their belts and got out without them noticing it, but uh, she's using them as bait. Which, which posed the question: What else was she able to like get in and get out without anyone noticing? Oh, a thong, perhaps. Yeah. (laughs) Was there a panty raid? Did Cora Jade execute successfully (laughs) execute a panty raid? That's what I'm saying. She is looking for some three-on-one action tonight, and she doesn't care, though. Uh, Cameron Grimes loses to Santos Escobar. You get that, into huh? the six-person tag team match for the North American title. Yes. yes. Santos got a win, Vince. About yes, fucking okay. time. About fucking time. I'm giving it its due because you, you made insinuations about me in the past that I brush over Hispanic wins. So... Okay. If the sombrero fits, Matt, oh. it doesn't. If the sombrero, fits. there's not, there's not a sombrero big enough to fit this head, baby. <laughs> Which one are you talking about? The one right here on your scalp, or the one down there? Both. <laughs> um, Wendy and Dakota start bonding. The toxic attraction interrupts. They're looking for Cora. Tells Team Sleepy Psychos they need to get the job done next week and win. And they're like, well, why do you want us to win? Basically, it's because they don't want to fight EO and Kaylee Ray. And mm-hmm. then they they do the dumb white girl thing in a horror movie because apparently none of these chicks have ever seen a horror movie and they split the fuck up. You're like, oh. we'll split up and we'll find her. You're fucking stupid. Uh, a kid from NXT UK makes his debut and unfortunately defeats Kushida. So Hispanics are winning. Asians are losing on NXT 2.0. Yeah, Asian hate's been around. Yep. It is. Uh, we got an interview with Santo Escobar. He says he is the greatest luchador of all time. And then out come motherfucking Rey Mysterio and Dominic. What the fuck is going on in NXT? And Ray's like, listen, you say you're the future. I think my son's the future. Well, no shit. You're not going to say your son's not the fucking future, Ray. You'd be as big of a shitty parent as YK Wrestling made you out to be. If you said, no, you're not the future kid. This guy is. Uh, Legato asks Dom if he wants a fight and he says I don't give a fuck whoever wants to step up and Dom is finally where he should have been all along uh-huh. in NXT 2.0 yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, speaking of Asians losing Harriet Potter loses to Tiffany Stratton uh, Harriet Potter is Saray Saray 
Oh, so so Saray went to Japan, met her mom, got a Horcrux, and then turned into Asian uh, female Harry Potter, and does like a Sailor Moon transition before she comes out for her matches. Yeah. Yep. She's so, Harry Potter mixed with Sailor Moon. Yes. Yeah. Uh, she got jumped by Stratton before she could transform. Comes down to the ring, loses the match. Uh, JC Jane finds her belt just hanging in the back in a red lit area and without, you know, apparently never seeing a fucking Saw (laughs) movie, just like, hey, let me go grab this fucking thing. And a gate shuts behind her and she gets locked in a cage. And then Cora shows up and steals that shit. Um, Gunther and LA have words basically. Gunther says LA's a bitch and isn't going to win tonight. Uh, Chapa gives us his big farewell. You know, a very hard felt speech where he's basically letting us know he's on his way up to the main roster and how much NXT and everything meant to him and all of this. And then at the very end, Tony D decides that before he leaves, he, Tony D needs to beat Champa at Stand and Deliver so that he can be the new Don of NXT. This is what he needs is to take out Ciampa before Ciampa leaves. Ciampa agrees because Tony asked respectfully. And then poor Ciampa, because he's so old. No, I don't hear anything in the background, Vince. Because he's so old, uh, also, you got your mic muted, so how would I hear it? Well, that's why I have it muted. Can you hear what's seen again dead in the background? Yeah, very little. Very very slightly. Okay. Anyway, (laughs) poor old-ass Ciampa, who had to dye his beard, trips falls into tony's knee and then tony tried to pick him up by the face and he's like hey bro i got you uh, he's gonna be the new don like he, he tried to help chapa but chapa's old he, he, he fell and he couldn't get up like what do you want right uh then we have indy versus persia the tag team who is now fighting to see who is best this does not matter indy gets the win they do a be- so they come out together like they're fighting each other, but they enter together like a tag team and they're doing like a tag team dance battle sort of thing where like they're trying to one up each other in their entrance. Uh, Dexter and Duke come down. Duke ends up distracting Persia, which is why Persia lost. And then at the very end of the match, we have a fucking dry fuck off in the middle of the ring. Like okay, Persia, Persia starts making out with Duke. So Indy starts making out with Dexter. She Luthas presses Dexter to the ground, starts riding him and making out with them. So Persia's not going to be outdone. So she tackles Duke to the ground. And then we just kind of go to commercial with them dry fucking in the middle of the ring. I absolutely loved it. Yeah. Uh, Gigi Dolan uh-huh. finds her belt in a dumpster. And Gigi, you are so, so pretty, but so, so stupid. She climbs into the dumpster to retrieve her belt. Cora Jade then seals her into the dumpster with a forklift and walks away. This reminded me very much of Stone Cold hunting DX from the early 2000s. Um, Dominic Mysterio defeats Raul Mendoza. Electra Lopez is ringside looking like a snack. And because of that, I didn't pay attention to most of this match. (laughs) I'm not going to lie to you, uh, but I'm sure they did a lot of flips and flops and really fun shit. Um, uh, Dom finished the match with a uh, frog splash, so shout out to shout out to his father, Eddie Guerrero. Shout out to his father, Eddie Guerrero, <laughs> his poppy, his poppy, his poppy. Uh, After the match, uh, Electra gets or during the match, Electra gets dropped by the bartender, Fallon Henley. Uh, shout out to T Pain. Uh, yeah. and then Brooks and Dunn show up and they get in Legato's face because you know they're from Texas and they don't like Legato. Yeah. Mm. Racist Texans. <laughs> uh, Cora contemplates spray painting Mandy's new Range Rover because Mandy's the last one, and she's like, "Oh, hey, look, there's Mandy's car." And uh, then she's like, "No, you know what? I'm just gonna hop in and steal it because apparently, like, Mandy left the key. Like, you could just get in and just drive away in the car now. Like, the keys are in it or whatever. Like, what the fuck?" Oh my god! But Cora Jade, being about as old as Vince. Again, does not know the rules to survive a slasher. She's actually younger. I think she just barely turned like 21, 22. Which is really sad. You always check the fucking back seat. Mm-hmm. How do you people survive not knowing these things? You never just get into a car and go. <laughs> I own my fucking car and I lock it every night. I get in there and I check the fucking back seat before I go anywhere. 
<laughs> Mandy Rose is in the backseat and fucks Cora Jade up and then spray paints her. And we find out that the, the can of spray paint that Cora Jade was going to use to deface Mandy's car was white. Guess what color Mandy's car is? <laughs> she was going to spray paint a white car with white spray paint. Yeah, I know. What Unless she was going to do it on the on the windshield. You know. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mandy <laughs> whoops her or, ass. Or, or maybe when the spray can was in the hands of a white woman like Mandy Rose, it turned white. <laughs> I mean, Cora is also a white woman, so... It was light skin tone, but I think she has some other ethnicity in there. Was this look, black look, look Mandy or white Mandy? Because right, I know that's a thing. Uh, this, uh, uh, this is she's still brunette. technically black Mandy. Yeah, okay. So she's that dark. Okay. Well, okay, maybe she was okay. Well, I don't know. Now no, no. when when, when Mandy when Mandy was spray painting Cora, all I could think of was that line from the Kid Rock song. I'm gonna paint the town red and I'm gonna paint his wife white. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh oh, the creeds geez. call out match shitty kids, match shitty kids. Or like, hey, why do you think we did it? Like, obviously, you're fucking shitty. You're you're associated with Matt Real. That's why they find you suspicious because you're fucking suspicious. <laughs> Imperium laughs from the balcony about none of them being worthy to take them on. MSK continue to try and convince everyone that they deserve to be in a match that they didn't earn, that they lost. That is rightfully the creeds, but they're like inserting themselves in any way for no reason. Like. This is rape. This is this is wrestling rape. Like no one asked you to be here, and you're just putting yourself in anyway. No consent is what you're saying. Oh, no oh, consent. Oh, yeah. But then they get consent. You know they it, <laughs> they got consent. It's a triple threat match. It's standing deliver for the tag team titles, and MSK doesn't deserve to be there. Uh, Cameron Grimes gets really sad because he's a failure, and basically says like he failed. Like he told his dad he's going to do all these things he didn't, and he fucking sucks, and he didn't achieve them, and now he's a failure. Um, we find out that. It was actually GYV that jumped the Creeds, and we're going to get a match next week between the Creeds and GYV. And then in our main event, while well, Vince goes to get his uh, his, his penis touched, Dolph Ziggler, <laughs> LA Knight, Braun arrives. He must have remembered that there was a show tonight at the last minute because he came back. Braun challenges to Dolph Ziggler at Stand and Deliver after dropping Robert Rude Lee. Rude <laughs> Dolph got the win, though. It was a damn good match between him and LA Knight. Uh, I'm going to swallow the main event. I'm going to yep. swallow the whole thing with Cora, Mandy, Toxic Attraction, because I swallow Toxic Attraction and everything they do, and I enjoy the shit out of it. Um, Indian Persian, the dry fucking. Yes. Big swallow. Big. Give me more of that. Yep. More of that with less clothes. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm gonna, yeah, I mean, I agree. I NXT, like, ever since they, I don't know, it's, I don't know when they actually, you know, when they had that last takeover or whatever. Uh, New Year's, was it New Year's Evil? You got pizza. I thought she was getting a taquito. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're muted. We can't hear you. Why well, can't both be true? <laughs> <laughs> Give her a little of that hot sauce. I know, a little, that's a quick taquito right there, isn't it? Um, what, ever since they, ever since like, what was it, New Year's Evil? Like, NXT has just been hitting, I think, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, like, dude, I love NXT 2.0. They're, they're finally finding their way. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, they kind of washed off all the black and gold. Like, you know what I'm saying? This era is like their era now. So, I, I, I mean, I, I like what's going on, you know? All right, Vince, what I'll do follow, you swallow? I just follow everything. Besides then, pizza. Uh, I was about to say I'm swallowing this pepperoni pizza, but um, I'm swallowing everything toxic attraction, Cora Jade. I thought that was very entertaining. Uh, just countless examples of dumb white girl energy in horror movies, not only from toxic attraction, but also from Cora Jade, which I love. Yeah. I'm going to swallow uh, Dolph Ziggler, like doing the Matt Cardona shtick better than Matt Cardona, because fuck Matt Cardona. Like, I don't. <laughs> um, Miss TV being on the show. He survived cancer, Vince. Give a fuck. 
don't give a fuck. <laughs> no, who, t- who, gave, who told him? I ain't, I ain't asked for that. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, damn. I didn't ask him to. Damn. No, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm done. I'm done. Um, I'm going to swallow Dom and Rey Mysterio being on NXT 2.0. And I like the transition. Uh, like, this might be how you get Dom permanently on NXT. God, I hope forward. so. Uh, and then Rey Mysterio being on NXT 2.0 as his manager would be a way to get him on TV. Because, like, I, from what I'm hearing, WWE wants a raw superstar every week on NXT. And that's one way to get a raw superstar is by having Rey Mysterio managing Dom. Um, because the brand split doesn't fucking exist. And they just like to <laughs> fuck you over when it comes to over. No, no. Brand. Here's the thing. It's not real. It doesn't exist. It's not real. And we're going to talk about it when we get to SmackDown. It, it just does not exist. And we're not going to talk about it anymore. We're not going to get mad about it until they try and pretend that it is real. And then we'll bitch about it. Right. Uh, I'm swallowing Escobar, getting the win, getting into the ladder match against Carmelo Hayes. Me too. Swallowing Thanks. Electra Lopez. Um. Cool. Mm. It's hard. I, I looked up pictures. Yeah. How, fuck, how, fuck, yeah. How, how, I'm swallowing the dry hump off at the end of the, the match between Persia and Indy Hartwell. Ooh. And I'm swallowing uh, Carmelo Hayes, like throwing Pete Dunn references about him. Like, oh, yeah, I beat him so bad. I sent him over to a different show and they changed his name and stuff. Like, he changed his name and everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. So shout That's out good. to that. Yeah, swallow that. Uh, I'm also going to swallow A Kid's debut. Uh, it was a good match. He's here. That was cool. Um, are we spitting anything from? Uh, I mean, I'm spitting MSK, uh, forcing themselves into an opportunity that they did not earn or deserve or should have. I'm okay with it. I know you are. You love. I mean, you have bad taste. I understand. <laughs> As a wrestling fan that has no idea what the fuck is going on with this new X- NXT, I'm gonna swallow it all and actually am like kind of intrigued on what the hell is going on. You should watch this week's episode, Daryl. Okay. Apparently, I should. Barely... I have to show you Wendy Chu. I forgot to show you Wendy Chu. Oh a, yeah, that's a sleepy. Yeah, that's a sleepy dude, one. Yeah. like, it's a hoot and a half, Daryl. It's, it's a hoot great. and a half. Yeah. It's a great man. It's great. I mean, I feel like cool. Vince wanted, or you guys wanted to get hired. Uh, Daryl wanted to get hired for his great ideas earlier, but I feel like the way I cover NXT, if you want to get people to watch NXT 2.0, they should hire me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do the recaps. Yeah. I mean, Let's just the dry humping. I was gonna, so I was like, you had me at dry humping, and I'm like, okay, you got it. Oh, uh, I also want to swallow uh, Tony D and Champa and the, the the farewell of that whole thing because you got the heartfelt message from Champa. Champa's gonna go out on a loss. He's gonna put Tony D over. It's gonna do big things for Tony D. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh spitting. I'm just spitting MSK. That's all I got. Anyone I'm any spitting uh, NXT's hatred towards Asians this week. Uh, yeah. Because yeah, you know, Lala, I think, like, Sa- what's her name? The Sailor Moon girl? Um, Saray. 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 Loss and Saray. Saray. <laughs> Saray. Oh, no. Wait. <laughs> it's Rodu. No. no Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix is Filipino. He was I- not. He was yeah. not. Oh. Joaquin Wild, Joaquin Wild is Filipino. Yeah, well, I mean, like, Joaquin Phoenix is the actor. I was like, what the fuck? I did not know he was Filipino. As, yeah, he's Filipino. Spray paint that Corey Jade. Joaquin Joaquin Phoenix is Filipino. Yeah, he's not actually Mexican. <laughs> no, Phoenix Vince. Joaquin the actor. Phoenix. Yeah. Joaquin Phoenix. Is yeah. There you go. <laughs> See, he catches up. He catches up. Oh, wait, Whatever, man. I thought he's white. Is he not white? Oh, he's white as shit. That's why when you said he was Filipino, oh, yeah, I was shocked. I thought we were talking about how Joaquin Wild from yeah, from Legato yeah. of the Fantasma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're good. Wait, this chick's All right. name is Sarah J. What the fuck's her name? Sarah J. Saray. Hi J. What the fuck? Like, because they're like, oh, it sounds like Sriracha. So let's just put Sarah. It, it, it's Saray. Oh. Uh, That's what I said. So, are you saying she's the Asian Sarah J? Is that what you're? I mean, she had tits. Like, what's going on here? Oh, okay. Then she is. <laughs> she's like the the Mister Glass to Sarah J. Then, the yeah, exact opposite. Yes. Um. Perfect. Okay. What I'm else? Pick up. Yeah, but uh, specifically Kashida losing, and then just Saray yeah. not being able to activate her hot crocs and that and engage right. her Sailor Moon powers. He you did know? some of the right power. 
No. Yeah. She never got a chance to. Yeah. Now we got a chance. Oh, well. No, well. NXT 2.0. Spit or swallow. 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 It was a swallow the minute oh, the episode okay. started. Yep. Swallow, yeah. swallow, swallow. Yo, yo, yo. All right. Dynamite. We kick it off. Jurassic Express and Adam Page lose to the Undefined Direction. Uh, we have an interview with Keith Lee and Team Taz. Rampage is the Team Taz show. If Keith Lee shows up, he's going to get dropped again. T- Keith Lee's like, I ain't no bitch. I'll see you Friday. Fuck you guys. Uh, Mox and Brian Danielson defeat Wheeler Yuta and uh, Chuck Taylor because apparently no one else from the Best Friends was ready to go, and they went with the <laughs> bottom of the barrel. Um, Mox about popped off Wheeler Yuta's head during the match, and then after the match, Yuta gets back in the ring with William Regal, who is now the manager of Brian Danielson and John Moxley. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I repeat that for you, Daryl. William Regal. Oh, yeah, I know. Now the manager for Brian Danielson and John Moxley, the tag team. What the fuck is going on? It's wrestling, baby. Yeah. They're yeah. starting a faction of just badasses. Oh, just- they like to hurt people. So yeah. Yuta gets so Yuta gets back in the ring. He reaches his hand out to William Regal and gets bitch slapped by William Regal. And then Yuta's like, man, fuck you, and gets in his face. And Brian Anderson kind of comes in, and they have some words that we can't quite hear. And then Yuta leaves. But the whole thing is like Brian Danielson wanted to team with John Moxley so that they could build a faction where they bring in young guys like Wheeler Yuta and teach them how to be badasses and like really wrestle and yeah. do some shit. And then they went and got William Regal, because WWE fired him, because they don't care about war games, and they're like, William's going to come in and manage us and help us, you know, with these decisions and everything. Willie or Yuta looks like he may be the first person of the young up-and-comers for them to pull in and make yeah. part of this group Definitely. with tough love. Like, they're going to they're gonna beat him. They're going to beat him in like it's a gang. Like, they're going to jump him in. Whoop his yeah. ass. Um, Chris Statlander is apparently possibly doing a gimmick change we had a vignette where she wiped all of her makeup off and took her contact out okay ftr talks about how they dumped tully they said tully lost his focus blah 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 blah. the young bucks come in and they're like you know it doesn't really matter who you guys have you guys could have the best there is you guys would still suck little possible bret hart managing ftr easter egg because we know dax is a huge bret hart fan um and Unlike WWE, who's been teasing Cody Rhodes and didn't give the fans Cody Rhodes, uh, Koki Khan has a shit ton of money and will probably give you what you want. So right. if you want Bret Hart, you'll get Bret Hart. Yep. Um, we got an acclaimed promo. Team Taz tells the acclaimed that they need to drop Keith Lee on Friday. Swerve steps to Starks and reminds him whose house this is. Swerve's house. Thank you. <laughs> um, the Jericho Appreciation Group of Fine Fellows. The Jagoffs have a promo. Uh, Matt, <laughs> Jeff, and Garlita, uh, Team Extreme 2.0, sing Jericho's praises. No one laughed at the Garlita joke. Lita, Garlita, come on. What the fuck? Their names are Matt and Jeff. You guys suck. <laughs> anyway, 2.0 reminds us uh, Jericho sings his own theme song like we didn't know. They sing his praises. And then Jericho, the head Jagoff, jerks himself off for a little while, says, I'm a sports entertainer. And then Daniel Garcia, who's supposed to be this big deal on the Indies, who's a real pro wrestler's pro wrestler, says, you know what? If you're a pro wrestler or if you're a sports entertainer, then I am a sports entertainer. (laughs) The Jagoffs are sports entertainers. This is, you know, because AEW is about pro wrestling and sports entertainment is bad, blah, blah, blah. Um, A lot of people seem to really enjoy it. I know Mr. Warren Hayes loved it. Uh, Serena Deeb vignette. She's basically says she's going to end Sheeta's career. Wardlow loses his TNT title match to Scorpio because he fucked over MJF and MJF fucked him over. We got Dan Lambert wearing the second belt because Scorpio's like, I'm only going to wear one belt. I'm not going to be an idiot like Darby Allen. So he gave the belt to Dan Lambert. Do you, you um, mean uh, you mean Sammy Guevara? Yeah, Sammy Guevara. That is correct. <laughs> uh, Spears distracts Wardlow and then MJF blindsides him, runs him into the ring post, which is how he lost. Then Mr. Paige Van Zant comes in, punches Wardlow after the match. Wardlow makes a comeback, but then Spears hits him with a chair and saves MJF. 
Wardlow gets jumped, taking chair shots and all sorts of punishment. MJF then hands Dan Lambert some money as a thank you for setting this whole thing up and drops Wardlow with the diamond ring. Uh, We got an interview from Jade. Who's ready to get kissed by Jade and then beat because that's her thing now. She makes out with you and then defeats you. I volunteer Abaddon. Jade Cargill, stop ducking Abaddon. The devil's (laughs) thickest demon. You're afraid. I know you're afraid. Stop (laughs) ducking Abaddon. You're all, I beat everyone. You didn't beat Abaddon, goddammit. Give Abaddon a chance. Abaddon. 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 Uh, The Hardys defeat Proud and Powerful. Uh, I mean, Private Party. Yeah, sorry. The Hardys defeat Private Party. I I put PP. So the the Hardys (laughs) defeated the PP. Uh, private party. The AFO surrounds the ring. Sting and Darby come out, make the save, run off Andrade and his newly bought henchmen. And then in our main event, Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker tear it down in a steel cage match. Rosa getting the win, becoming your new AEW women's champion. She was played to the ring by an all female mariachi band. She came out with the cape or the uh um, the flag full suit representing her culture we got a ref bump during the match aubrey comes out there were thumbtacks there were chairs it was yeah. dangerous women bled and it wasn't even that time of the month that i know of it was fantastic i even like the fact that the cage went all the way down to the floor and there was a little mm-hmm. bit of like it was almost yeah. like a hell in a cell with like a mini hell in a cell I made that joke because everyone's like, oh, women shouldn't bleed on AEW. Why? Shut the fuck up and let these women do what the fuck they're going to do. Yeah, exactly. You don't have a problem with men doing it. You should have a problem with women doing it. And if you do have a problem with men doing it, then maybe AEW isn't for you. But I grew up in a time where people got thumbtacks, lit on fire, bled, beaten. So I appreciate that seeing that. Yeah. I, yeah. I appreciate them letting the women do it because they have just as much right as the men to do these things. So they had a badass fucking match. Thunder Rosa won, and that's where I'm starting my swallows. Thunder Rosa, your new AEW Women's Champ. Damn good match. Love it. I, I'm going I'm to double down on your swallow there, Matt, and say that I'm. that's the first thing. Thunder Rosa coming snowball? out. Yeah, the snowballer. Um, <laughs> Thunder Rosa being played out by the all-women mariachi band. The song they played, it was fantastic. They killed it. Thunder Rosa coming out in, like, the mariachi, like, like uh, cosplay, like, for, like, her entrance, coming out with the flags. I loved all of it. I loved that representation and just like shout out for like just women empowerment. It's just, it was women empowerment. It was representation and it was fantastic. I loved all of that. The ring mm-hmm. gear was great too. Like, yeah. It was the flag too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it had like a mix of like, like two, at least two different gears because she was a Lucha Underground as like Viper and she was like, where, like a Vipress or whatever. Like, and she had a mask on and like, if you see like the green in her gear, it had like like uh, like snake skin scales. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought it was dragon scales. No, I think it was like snake skin because she was called like Viperus or Viper or whatever in Lucha oh Underground. So that's what I thought it was. Lucha was on Lucha Underground. Lucha Underground was a hoot and a half too. Oh, I I love I love I love Lucha Underground. I love Lucha Underground. <laughs> the first two seasons. The first two seasons. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It was just, it was, it was just a whole, it was a whole thing. It was like a telenovela, yes, mixed uh, with wrestling. They like, they like got all drama, yeah. and they had somebody kept in the cage, like for yeah. like years. And, and <laughs> yeah, like, it was so. It was wrestling's version of La Rosa de Guadalupe. You know, oh what? yeah. If you know, you know. If without you know, the you slime, know. without the slime, without <laughs> the slime. <laughs> okay, there you go. There you go. Um, I am really Chulo. white right now and completely lost. So it's okay. It's okay. Papi Chulo. <laughs> I'm gonna swallow uh, Mox and Daniel Bryan beating the shit out of Yuta and especially Chuck E. T. And then the whole segment with Regal and Jurassic Express and Paige losing to the undefined erection. Uh love seeing UE, even though Bobby Fish was one of the people who donated, so fuck him as well, along with Matt Riddle to uh that campaign. Um, um. But we don't have cool Kyle anymore, and Adam Cole's all right. So, you know, I, they, some of yeah. us have shitty friends and family members. So what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, I want to swallow the bitch slap that Regal gave pretty Kyle. I thought it was fantastic. It, I felt like it was what he deserved and then some. 
Oh, uh, no. And it looked like kind of Willard, uh, I mean, Pretty Kyle kind of enjoyed it there, which isn't surprising whatsoever. He does like getting slapped in the face. Pretty Kyle does like getting slapped in the face. That, I it, can, it, can confirm. Okay. Oh. Uh, and then uh, just swallowing uh, Dan Housen. He was very he was very nice, very evil on this week's episode of Dynamite. <laughs> Did you see that he tweeted at Renee asking her to tell Mox not to chase him anymore? <laughs> no, I didn't. I yes. have to look at that up. That's he did. hilarious. Great. That's he's, hilarious. He's, hilarious. He's, a um, he's a hoot and a half. <laughs> I'm also gonna swallow Wardlow Scorpio Sky. I mean, I, I saw it coming, I knew where it was going, but you know, I'm I I'm looking forward to Wardlow versus MJF facing off and hopefully Wardlow going over. Um uh, I'm swallowing the fact that Scorpio Sky didn't like lose the title right away. <laughs> I was afraid, like I like when I was talking about like the rampage better swallow episode with uh, Shalit showcase. I was saying that I'm all for Wardlow winning that opportunity to challenge Scorpio Sky. However, I'm gonna spit it if he beats him for the title and Scorpio Sky is just a transitional champion. Revolution, spitter swallow. There you go. There you go. Not the rampage spitter swallow. Did I say rampage? You said rampage. You know what? That was that was a lingering thing. I like, mean, you you've you've corrected me a few times, so I got one on you. Like I'm just it's okay. It's it's what we're here yeah. for. It's, it's what we're here for. Half. It's a hoot and a half. <laughs> yeah, it's a hoot and a half. <laughs> I, uh, I will follow the the match with uh, Brian Danielson and uh and John Moxley, that tag match. You know, yeah. they, mm-hmm. did, uh, they did a heart attack. Yep. Which which was funny because when the setup came. Brian didn't even look like he knew what he was doing. He was like, "Oh wait, okay, let me go this way." <laughs> right? And uh, yeah, I thought that was great. And I'm like, you know, John Moxie, he's like, you know, no offense to Brian, but he is short, and John yeah. Moxie a little bit taller. So when he had him up, he really had to get that momentum to get him in the, you know. Yeah, he's got to jump, and as yeah. we all know, white men can't jump. So, <laughs> hey, I know basketball. Hey, there you go. <laughs> that's See? some. That's some basketball. Yeah, that's something. Uh, Who did it have? <laughs> we spin anything from dynamite. Uh, Jericho's existence. <laughs> you you didn't love the sports entertainer promo? I don't. I don't enjoy Chris Jericho at all right now. Like and okay. like, like he's the new Aaliyah. He's the new Aaliyah. No, don't say that. Yeah, I don't want to see. He's, he's the Aaliyah of AEW. No, Daryl seems confused and doesn't get the Aaliyah reference. Uh, you know, Leah, remember Leah from NXT? How like she just like was suffering there with Aaliyah? Well, that, that's not why Vince, Vince hated Aaliyah for no reason in NXT and now he hates Jericho. Oh, I just hated her because she was just there and she wasn't doing anything. I think she, I didn't care about her. She just went through like 9,000 million gimmick changes in like about nine years. Didn't look like she was going to go anywhere. I'm surprised she wasn't released when so many releases were happening. And she just took up space on my television screen that Damn. didn't need to be taken up. And now Jericho is taking up that role no. in AEW because I'm enjoying AEW right now, but Jericho is out there and he just that's no. my bathroom break. The minute I see that man on television is when I get up to take a shit. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm also gonna spit the Hardys versus Private Party because oh yeah, I didn't need I didn't I didn't need no more of that the Hardys revival. It's cool for Private Party because they were Hardy Boys fans and that's why they were with Matt and all that. So like, good for them. Mm-hmm. But like, I don't need to see Jeff. Like, I thought I thought yeah, thought he was done. I thought he left. No, yeah. <laughs> they have they, they have no 24 seven division. He has no no reason to be there. I mean, they can always stick them on AEW Dark or Rampage. It's the same oh, thing. It's that would be ROH champion. It's going to be the next ROH champion. <laughs> Overall, Dynamite, Spit or Swallow. I'll, I'll swallow the show. Ah, gargle, undecidably. I'm going to swallow for Thunder Rosa. Well, you know what? No, I'll swallow. For the cage match alone, I'll swallow. Yeah. 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 Thunder Rosa. Swallowing yeah. for Rosa. Swallow. swallow. You got it. Yeah. Thunder Rosa, man. She's like fa- so fan friendly on Twitter. It's kind she of is. She is. She is so nice and lovely. All right. Last show because we didn't cover Rampage. SmackDown. Uh, the Bloodline have a promo. Roman comes out, rubs in how he smashed Brock. Paul's like, "Hey, guess what? Brock's flight got canceled. He got delayed four hours because of weather." 
And then Roman's like, yeah, that's right. Brock is such a bitch, and he's so scared of me that he changed the weather so he didn't have to show up. And while he's going off about this, Paul's like, oh, hey, actually, his plane did land, and he's on his way right here. But Roman's like, shut the fuck up. I'm not trying to listen to you right now. I'm trying to talk about how much of a bitch Brock Lesnar is, and he's running scared. And when he finally does hear what Paul's saying, Roman gets scared, and he's like, all right, well, you finish this promo. We're getting the fuck out of here. They run to the back. They get into an SUV and then double penetration with a fucking forklift through the windows. <laughs> Brock just fucks the shit out of that SUV, scares the shit out of Roman and the Usos. They get out. They steal a fucking pickup truck. Brock grabs the door and rips the door off of a moving pickup truck. Right off the hinges. Then carries it down to the ring yeah. with him from the back. And Brock admits that he is now bi. He comes out as bi, which was cool. Um, and then tells wait, Roman, wait, wait, what? Bipolar. Bipolar. Oh. He's bipolar. <laughs> That's what I said, right? Oh, no, no. I yeah, just... he calls himself a bipolar beast. That, that was that was part of it. Yeah, it's F5, not F them. <laughs> and then he tells Roman he's coming for blood at WrestleMania. Uh Bugamora defeat Los Lotharios, Drew and the Viking Raiders defeat Corbin and Jinder and Shanky. We got a Sammy promo. He wants an anything goes match with Johnny Knoxville. Dildos, strap ons, all of it. Anything goes in Knoxville versus Zane. Which, which he accepts Corbin. later on. Which which he, uh, that is later on, Vince. We will get there. Yeah, we can talk about it. Now. It's literally no. right after Team Bad versus. Live yeah. for Brutality, which is the official name of Liv Morgan and Rhea name? Ripley as a tag team, uh, ends in DQ because Natty and Shayna Baszler come out and say, hey, we're going to fuck everything up, beat everyone up. There's a big brawl. The tag champs are ringside. They get involved. Zelina and Carmella are fighting. And then Natty and Shayna look at the tag team titles and they're like, oh, hey, you know what? Maybe we'd like those too. And guess what? Sonya adds them to the match at WrestleMania. Oh so now it is a fatal four way live for brutality versus team bad versus the submission scissor sisters, Shayna and Natalia versus your tag team champions, Zelina and Carmella for the women's tag team titles. And yes, Rhea and Liv are raw wrestlers on SmackDown. And yes, Brock is the raw champion on SmackDown. Oh, you look like you wanted to say something about the scissoring submission sisters. Uh, so I was actually going to say that, like, there was, I kind of put it down in my notes that commentary was making the, because you know how, like, Team Bad used to say, like, unity? Like, yeah. that was kind of like their catchphrase was, uh, I'm not going to do the high pitch uh, screech version of it. But yeah. um, there you go. Thank you, Justin. Um, I, I, they made, like, two references about their having unity from back in their day, like, history. So, like, I think they're going to, like, eventually have unity or some, like, some some way including unity as their name because I don't think they're going to go with Team Bad. Mm-hmm. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, with Shayna and Natalia, they actually make them a tag team and they kind of, like, play up, like, Natalia being, like, a horror and then Shayna being uh-huh. spades. You know, they could be, like, the queen, like, heart and spades or like the the queen like like they're gonna make like a like a like playing card reference i feel like and I then see, i like scissoring submission sisters better because when you look at when you look at the actual move that is natalia's finisher it looks like she's scissoring her opponent before she wraps them up yeah 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 <laughs> she has the, the step over yeah <laughs> oh and also to one other name uh can we can we can we start calling Drew McIntyre if Viking Raiders uh, and Drew McIntyre start teaming together? Can we start calling them medieval times? Because that's what I was no, thinking about. No, because I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck about Drew McIntyre, the Viking Raiders, Jinder Mahal, Baron Corbin, Happy Corbin, Shanky. None of it. Nappy Corbin? You don't care about Nappy Corbin? You know? I, yo, no, not his nappiness. Times. I like we could have we could have taken we could have taken medieval times and whatever the fuck Happy Corbin and his bullshit was off my fucking TV and let Aaliyah and Shotzi or Zia Lee get some fucking time on TV. True. true, 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 true. Anyway, Johnny Knoxville accepts the challenge from Sami Zayn. I know you guys didn't know that was coming. Thanks, Vince. Uh, Pat gets called into Vince's office 
And when we come back, he looks violated leaving Vince's office. Like Vince is like, hey, strip down and <laughs> bark like a dog and walked him around the office or something. I don't know what happened. That's why I asked. Uh, why I asked. Pat comes out, starts cutting a promo about how he loves wrestling and WWE and the business. And then Austin Theories comes out. And he's like, you're going to apologize. Vince said you had to apologize. You better apologize. You're going to apologize. Where's my apology? So Pat's like, all right, I'll apologize. I'm sorry for whooping your ass. I'm sorry that your parents raised such a douchebag. I'm oh. sorry that I made your filter face ass relevant. And I'm sorry that you're a punk ass bitch. <laughs> So then Austin Theory takes a selfie with them and pushes them and leaves. But he did apologize. Yeah. Uh, Kofi loses to Ridge Holland. <laughs> Sorry. They recapped Big E's neck getting broken. Oh, oh they showed it? Before yeah, they... Ridge Holland got the match with Kofi. Michael Cole did make a point of saying that Rich publicly apologized and showed remorse for injuring Biggie and then wished them a speedy recovery oh, and no. that he hopes to like meet him in the ring sometimes down the line. Yes, I'm just glad that you know no. he didn't drop Kofi on his head. Um, I feel bad for Rich, man. Like, first his knees blow get blown out over at NXT, like, he 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 cannot catch a break. Like, he's like, What's that the, one dude? Is the front desk in there yelling at you for being loud again? What are you talking about? Are you talking? About, you know, no, no, sorry. <laughs> we have, we have, uh, we have March Madness highlights going on as well. For, oh, yeah, uh, we're uh, okay, okay. I thought you were talking uh, about me. I, I thought you were talking about me, Matt. No, no. Uh, the other night, uh, Justin was a little too loud in his hotel room and got a call from the front desk asking him to shut the fuck up. Oh, People wow. are trying to sleep. Wow. And I wasn't even there for that. I just heard about second hand. Second hand. I missed it. That was, that was second hand cheese, man. I had bubble guts that night. I that <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, no. Uh, then in no. Our, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Because I yeah, didn't finish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta let me finish, man. It's important to always let your partners finish, man. They're like, come on, <laughs> come on. That's that's common courtesy. Common courtesy. It's just, uh, relationships. No, it's just relationships. Key to a relationship. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Justin. I'm getting relationship uh, advice from a man who doesn't believe in foreplay. Okay, anyway, let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, move on. Move on. <laughs> Main event. Uh, we got a Charlotte promo in the main event. She taught Ronda a lesson last week. Uh, nobody has hurt Ronda worse than Charlotte. Um, and Ronda got saved from Charlotte last week by refs and security. She wants Ronda to climb her like a mountain. And I, I think that's what she said. Uh, Ronda is going to get scissor forward by the 13 time champion so hard. She'll end up pregnant again and back at home at WrestleMania. <laughs> Uh, Rhonda then gets called out and Kayla's like, Hey, hey, hey Rhonda, like, you know, this is a trap, right? And Rhonda's like, I don't give a fuck and went out there anyway. So they start brawling. Charlotte's grabbing giant bamboo dildos from everywhere. She's got them stashed all over the place and starts whooping Rhonda with these giant bamboo dildos. And it's a picking Rhonda. Up. Handy. You gotta have your you toys handy. <laughs> he has them just like, they're in the ring. They're by the timekeepers. They're under the desk. Like she's just pulling them out left and right. Rhonda gets her ass beat and put through the announce table, bloody mouth and all, as we close out SmackDown. I am swallowing the idea that Rhonda is going to get scissored forward into pregnancy. What the fuck? And beaten with giant bamboo dildos. <laughs> I kind of like tuned out. Like once, once y'all like got it there, I just like okay, time to tune into this blowout loss. The Bulls. I, I would rather watch the Bulls get blown <laughs> out by like twenty plus points than watch Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey on my television screen. Oh, that's God. that's that's how little I care about that that whole program, that whole match you know, whatsoever. Um, I agree with you. Man. Yeah, I mean, well, no, if you see if shit. you see her, like she acts like she doesn't want to be there. Who, Ronda, yeah, Ronda, both of them. Me. Both, both of them. Of them. Well, both, both of them. Just saying she's broke. Both, both of them, really. But Ronda, though. Just... Um, but going to Swallows, I'm just going to swallow Cowboy Brock just coming out, doing his thing, yeah. like fucking people with forklifts and then just destroying mm -hmm. doors off of trucks. I thought it was great. I loved every single bit of it. I'm more interested in this match now after seeing this week's episode of SmackDown. I'm going to swallow Pat McAfee. 
uh just yeah. shitting all over austin theory i yeah. loved it yeah. hell of a promo uh it felt so real too like it's like it feels like that's like what he wanted to say to austin theory you know forget this whole wrestling thing yeah yeah um want to swallow the women's tag match because that match was fantastic was really good really i want to call out before all the shit that happened yeah, be, before the interference happened, that mm-hmm. was match of the night. Before it got like, I get why they had to do what they did. Like, I I don't agree with them adding Shayna Baszler and Natalia into the match itself and making the fade a four way match because they seem to always do that and default that with the women's tag team titles at WrestleMania mm-hmm. or any big pay per view. Yeah. Like they could have done it with the tag champions coming in and, and interfering. But you can't have Lyft for Brutality or Team Bad take an L because I feel like those are the two, like, like head horses, like the two runaways that will walk away with the titles. We're going to have new women's tag team champions, and it's going to be either one of those two teams. True. But, yeah, I'm swallowing the teams. I'm swallowing the match itself. I'm not even I'm, – I'm, you know what? I'm even swallowing, like, uh, Shayna getting at it because, like, yes, we have to deal with Natty coming along, but – as long as Shayna gets on the card. He is Bret Hart's niece, Vince. You show her some goddamn respect. <laughs> I feel like okay. Natalia fucking up things is like the common thread for WWE like the last five years. If you ask Summer Rae, that's, that's exactly what she does. It's fucking oh, yeah, Summer Rae, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it is. I'm not swallowing anything else from SmackDown. That is it. That's it. I have some uh, spits, though. What are you spitting? Okay, so there's two things. Why is Roman acting like a you know scary ass bitch? Because yeah. it's motherfucking Brock Lesnar. He's a bipolar beast. It's like too. It was like too cartoony. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, you know, like like you know, like that type of shit. And then I also did like how who was which Uso was in the driver's seat. Was it Jimmy? He can't tell him apart. Oh, okay. That's but I up. like I think with the UI. Well, still, he still shouldn't still be in the front then. He shouldn't be in the front then. <laughs> he used to be able to tell them apart, and then Roman made them both bitches again, and now, now, now they're just the same person. But his acting, because everyone knows that that was a switch camera trick, yeah. right? Right. So they're acting when like when they acted like the glass that came through, and Jimmy like his facial expressions as if he pulled out, you know, like you know, he pulled out his one D. Yeah, he pulled out his one D. That he the guy in the driver's seat had the one D this week. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, that sounds exactly what like what. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no relations. Anyone can relate. Am I the only one? Okay. Yeah, I can't. I, I, I can't sharing say that sharing I... a D with someone. Oh. No. <laughs> oh no. Anyway, <laughs> we can move on. We swallowed anything. Or I mean, you and Daryl are sharing the camera right now. So. <laughs> And Daryl's name does start with D. There you go. <laughs> Daryl puts the D in the Get Yo podcast. Yes. Just D. Just D. Looking for hey, that would be your tag team. You guys could be just yeah. D. Just, there you just go. D. Like, that you know, could, be, be, that could be the title of the episode. Here, just D. <laughs> oh, man. No, I mean, I'll, I, I'll swallow SmackDown. It was a great show. I mean, the Ronda. Oh, I'm spitting SmackDown. You're spinning it? After Brock exactly. Lesnar, I didn't give a shit about anything but Pat McAfee. What about the women's tag match? The women's tag match. It was a good match, but like, again, where were Rhea and Liv supposed to be? Yeah, that's true. They should be in the in my heart, in, your in heart. our hearts. Yeah. <laughs> you could have, you could have done everything that they did, and you could have put Zia Lee and Aaliyah in that tag team match. It would not have been as nearly as good of a tag team match. But you could have done the exact same story and had women from SmackDown in a SmackDown women's tag team match and got the same thing across. True. I, you know what? I also spit like they're just doing what they did like two WrestleManias ago with like the four women tag team match. The yeah, they, they, they do that a lot. They do that a lot with the women's tag titles. I feel like this is like maybe the second or third time they've had a multi woman tag match for the in women's a ring, tag team titles. Right? It's because yeah. they're no longer doing the can't call it Moolah Battle Royal, so they need to get as many women in as many matches as possible. Well, didn't they call it the China Battle Royal or no? 
Uh, I think they did call the China battle. Or, or is that the what's the call? Not, no, I think people were petitioning. May Young, yeah. no, I don't know. no, that yeah, was, was a May Young classic. The Linda McMahon, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Battle Royal <laughs> Cabinet, the uh, President. Okay, anyway, uh. no. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm gonna swallow SmackDown. I thought like overall, like it was entertaining from top to finish. Except if you in- exclude the main event segment with Charlotte and Ronda, I enjoyed everything that was on the show, despite the fact that Angel Garza and Umberto Carrillo took an L. I'm you enjoyed sorry. that tag team match between Shinsuke, Boogs, and Los Lotharios. I just enjoyed Los Lotharios being on my screen. You, anything you to get Angel the Garza. Six man tag team match. Only because I like the the name that I gave Viking Raiders and Drew McIntyre as medieval times. Medieval then, times. That, I popped myself. I was like, you enjoyed Kofi yeah. getting wrecked by three white guys. All of yourself. Why not? Why not? Why not? With no backup. Why not? You enjoyed not? Butch. You enjoyed Butch. Oh. By the way, Pete oh. Dunn's name is Butch now, Daryl. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I saw yeah. the fucking terrible Twitter news on that. That sounds so dumb. You know what? You know what? I'm spitting SmackDown. I'm just going to swallow just because I like the Brock stuff so much. And I like the women's tag match so much. Those two things alone are making me enjoy SmackDown. I enjoyed the episode. It was fine. It was what it was. I think I'm going to gargle now that I, you know, talking about it. Now that you think about it? No, yeah. I mean, it was a hoot and a half regardless. Speaking of a hoot and a half, are we all in agreement that NXT 2.0 was the best show this week? Yes. 1,000%. Yeah. We had an abundance of Mexicans. Everyone was trying to dry hump each other. We had like dumb white girl scary movie energy. And and you know, if you can look past the Asian hate, you know, it's it was a pretty solid episode. <laughs> you can look past the Asian dry hate. humping, dry humping over Asian hate is always gonna happen, apparently. Yeah, um, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, Dolph Ziggler and Miss was on TV, so like uh, on my television screen on Wednesday, so yeah. And I like days. golf. I like what this man yeah. extra golf is yeah, doing. Fuck, whatever. I don't give a fuck, man. Like, this is anarchy. I'm here for it. I don't give a fuck. The rules don't make sense anymore. Everyone can show up anywhere. Exactly. <laughs> then, as per the Smack and a Raw podcast and the almost fully defunct Get Yo podcast, uh, who may or may not ever make a comeback, I'm hoping. Really Didn't hoping. you just do an episode on Get Yo podcast with Daryl? I mean, uh, with Justin? That was Man. that was just says that, that was or this is but your boy just this is your boy just that was my own episode. but isn't it under the like the get show umbrella? Yeah, it's under the umbrella it's, it's kind of like spitter swallows under the like the smack there you go. Umbrella. except there you spitter swallows still wrestling related and we talked about ghostbusters okay so get your ghostbusters on you know <laughs> <laughs> that's what you should have called it was get your ghostbusters there you go there you go uh yes. NXT 2.0, best show of the week. Mm-hmm. Daryl. I got to start and- watching this shit again. Yeah, bro. <laughs> just, watch, yeah. Let, just watch this week's episode. That's all you need to do. No, just watch D- the skin and max of NXT. You got it. Gotcha. Just D, you guys want to plug your shit? Yeah, you can find us on the Get Your Podcast on the Twitter, Get Your Podcast on the Instagram. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's it? <laughs> that's it? <laughs> That's all we the have no news about the next episode. We, we have, have no, no idea. Idea we, we, we are in we are in talks. We let her, we actually we may do an episode tomorrow. We, but we might do a kind of episode tomorrow with Jay. Okay. But Wait, is Jay is Jay like in the altitude with you guys? Is he in the mountains with you too? No, but we're driving to St. Louis, no. so we're gonna see each other tomorrow. Wait, he's in St. Louis? Yeah, we're gonna no, no, I'm making no. my way east, so we're gonna be in St. Louis. So wrestling fans of St. Louis, well, this is probably gonna be airing. Are you guys gonna vlog? Are you guys gonna vlog the whole trip? I don't know. Does anybody vlog? Does anybody care what we do? Vlog? No, it's it's so so. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Benji? No, not Benji. What's the dude from like uh, Men of the Year? Like the other dude that isn't Scorpio Sky? Ethan Page. Ethan Page has his own like. Like Vlogs. YouTube show, and he oh, calls it a vlog. Yeah, yeah. yeah but and nobody that's... cares about him. But I like him. He okay, he was the free, he was the freelance wrestling world heavyweight champion here in Chicago. So he loves that. Chicago. Sounds made up as fuck. That sounds as made up as New Japan. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> if Matt, we should go to a freelance wrestling show. It's oh, a hoot and, and a half. Warrior wrestling. Warrior wrestling. Come on, it's a warrior wrestling. Man, ain't, ain't nobody trying to go to Chicago Heights. 
I'm t- I'm what the to- fuck you got against Chicago Heights? <laughs> That's just long. I'm not trying. My to make family that trip. is from Chicago Heights. I'm not trying to make the trip to Chicago Heights, man. Why can't I just stay in Logan Square and go to freelance wrestling? You know, I'm coming from Elgin to Chicago Heights. It's a lot farther of a drive for me than it would be for you. <laughs> that sounds like a personal problem. Oh my! I'll go watch some wrestling with you in Chicago Heights. Fuck Vince. <laughs> Vince has to come to make it a whole thing. My, you know, Vince got to relive my old stomping grounds in Chicago Heights. There you go. There you go. But yeah, yeah. So we're trying to do an episode. All right, I'll, I'll carpool my way to Chicago uh, Heights. I'll carpool my way to Chicago Heights. So yeah. I'm still trying to figure Tell this out. Tell Benji to drive. I'm still trying Benji to figure don't this out. Don't drive. He he can barely like navigate life, let, let alone the Jay, car. Wait, is, <laughs> is Jay in St. Louis? Yes. <laughs> Does he live in St. Louis? No, oh, hell no, man. Little word, oh, like, he's just he's just visiting St. Louis. Well, we'll explain it after the after the because after, no. my understanding is Jay is your brother, right, Daryl? Yeah. If for some reason I'm not talking to Jay and Daryl helping Daryl move halfway across the country, I'm talking to Jay or Justin. Now I've got love for Justin because Jay has avoided me the entire time the Get Your Podcast has existed. He's That's like true. every time, every time Justin's like, "Hey, I got this white boy. He's got something better to do," and he never shows up. That's I came podcast. all the way out to record, and Garn was there, oh, and Charlie <laughs> was there, and Jay didn't show up. I was, the there. I was there. Yeah, I was there. I was there too. They're all there. They're all there. Damn. This is what I miss. You see? That's what I fucking miss when I'm not even in Chicago. They're not going to Charlotte. Fucking. Justin's well, a good brother. That's all I'm saying. Well, <laughs> Jizzy and everyone in the cafe are talking about making a trip in Chicago. We should. We should you do serious? a cafe. We, we should. We should do a cafe. I mean, live you're in. Podcast. You're in. You're in the cafeteria. You can read all of this. If you can, you know, they're all forgetting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you like hide in the bathroom for 10 minutes and pull your phone out and scroll real quick, <laughs> do you see how lost I am about I Dolls like Dolls Ziggler being a championship title holder and all that shit? I am lost. My kid has stolen my brain, man. Are you kidding me? Which reinforces cool. my belief that I probably don't want to have kids until I'm 40. So Vince, <laughs> thank you for that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't yeah. worry about that, Vince. I think. You're fine. Uh, plug your shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you're insinuating there, Matt, but you can find me on, on Instagram and Twitter at SES Vince. Go ahead and follow me there. Hit me up. Uh, follow the sh- uh, follow the show on Instagram at SmackDown Pod, which is where I run it, even though I've missed maybe like the last six episodes. So I haven't posted shit. But you should still follow because the follow comes. Are you doing this on purpose? <laughs> I'm not doing that on purpose, dude. It's just like I forget, and I never get around to it, and I'm like, oh, shit, it's almost no, no, no. Friday. Are you plugging this on purpose? Because we talked about this week after week, about how it is part of my spiel, and you don't have to plug it anymore. Like, we had a whole thing last week, Vince, about this. <laughs> I played the fifth. I have no recollection <laughs> of that. Such a It's bet. all that Jack and Coke. Too much Jack, not enough Coke. <laughs> That's <laughs> okay, <laughs> Tony Khan. Uh, I also do want to go ahead and plug that next week I'm going to be doing, I, I'm going to have a exact date. I'm going to tweet about it. And hopefully Matt will help spread the word. I'm going to be doing a live, str- a live, live stream for my Wrestling March Madness. We're going to be doing a Sweet 16 of the greatest wrestling groups, factions, stables, whatever you want to fucking call them. Mm. Me, Matt, Katie, and another guest is going to be there. I'm going to be trying to steer the ship, and Matt's going to be there to fuck it all up as best as he can. He's going to do his best Travis impression and try to like get me off course. But yes, tune in for next week. Like, Hopefully I can get this podcast going this March Madness podcast going in March. If not, it'll be early April. Yeah. 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 Hey, you guys can follow me at my brothers at M-A-T-T-R-I-D-D-E-R on Twitter only. Twitter and Instagram, Smackin' Raw Pod. I run the Twitter. Vince runs the Instagram, even though he already fucking said that. Creation World is the banner under which the Smackin' Raw Pod exists. CreationWorld.com. Twitter and Instagram at the Creation World at T-H-E-C-R-E-A-T-I-A World. Facebook.com slash Creation World and Facebook.com slash group slash Smackin' Raw is where you can find all of our shit. Over at Matt Ritter, there are link trees. Every time I post a new episode, there are link trees that will get you the merch. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, everywhere audio you can find us, and YouTube, and Pornhub, because... I am the poppy of Pornhub. 
No, you're not. We are the number one <laughs> wrestling podcast on Pornhub. Thank you, Daryl, for resurfacing. I'm glad to see you're still alive. It's been a long time. Uh, please, please, please do not text me tomorrow begging me to take this down. I would appreciate <laughs> that. Um, or actually, tomorrow's fine. Sunday, I'm going to be at the Shed Aquarium. So, like, if you got to do it, do it tomorrow. Oh, uh, Justin, shout out, shout out. You know, if we were going to shout out where we're going to be, I might be at Raw. So, like, if you're looking up at the nosebleeds in the 200 level in All State Arena, I may or may not be there with a sign. And you can go say hi to Vince, but if I'm at the shit of Aquarium with my family, do not come up and say hi to me. You just. <laughs> I encourage you to go up to Matt and talk to him at the shit Aquarium on Sunday. Don't go fucking ahead. do it. Don't <laughs> fucking do it. See, he's saying no, but he means yes. He means yes. Take that is, that, no that, means yes. In this that is some <laughs> fucked up frat boy logic there, Vince, that we don't support here on the Smack and Raw podcast. It sounds like something a super king of bros might say. Anyway. Justin, thank you for coming on. As always, you know we love you and appreciate you. Vince, thanks love, for showing up. Half drunk. Konnichiwa, bitches. For the Get Your Podcast and the Smack and Raw Podcast, I am your host, Ward Matt Ritter. We are Smack and Raw, the number one wrestling podcast on Pornhub. Chicago has the best pizza ever, period. 100%. 100%. Fucking pizza. <laughs>